you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and to give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Mobiles, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Life Chiropractic College West, and MSculpt. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 480 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I'm your producer, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Kristen O'Dell. If you want to hear the story about how nursing and chiropractic support each other, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. Today I have Kristen O'Dell on with me. Um, and this is episode 480. I'm uh, really excited. We were just talking a lot about her uh, her business and course, uh, New Mommy Guru and Mastering Motherhood. And I can't wait to like talk to you guys about how chiropractic um, converges with uh, nurse practitioning and birthing and recovery and newborns and development and uh, even helping during uh, labor. So this is going to be a really fun episode today. Um, but before we jump in, I just want to let everyone know our big why. Um, what we do over here at Cairo Hustle is we protect freedom of speech. As you guys have all noticed, uh, that's been kind of a concern over the past couple of years. Um, family freedom, medical freedom. We want people to have a uh, choice of their decisions that they make for them and their families. Um, and then chiropractically speaking, uh, we protect the sacred trust. If you don't know what that is, it's BJ Palmer's last words, and he was the developer of chiropractic, and uh, we just have to guard it. And uh, we go into a bit more philosophical discussion of subluxation. We do believe in subluxation-based chiropractic and innate intelligence and universal intelligence, and uh, that when man or woman, the physical get adjusted, it connects them to man or woman, the spiritual. And with that being said, uh, Kristen O'Dell, welcome to the show. Hi, James. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited to be here and congratulations on, on all the episodes that you have recorded. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, I, I was just, you know, reflecting back to Lindsay Matthews with birth fit right before this. And I was like, what episode was she on? And it was like 36. That was like year one. We're in year five now. That's wonderful. You've really, uh, you know, seen a goal for yourself and you're really hitting it out of the park. I think that's wonderful. Congrats. Yeah, you know, the number one podcast in the world is Joe Rogan, as most people know. And I was listening to him uh, with a guy yesterday from Barstool Sports. And uh, it was wild to me because Rogan's been doing this for 13 years. And I think that if somebody does like what they do and they just produce and they enjoy the market that they're making their their entertainment yeah. for, um, then we, we can... Uh, we can have fun with it long term. So I'm looking for another five years. <laughs> That's right. I love that. That's so true. If it's like a passion of yours, it's not a job. It's fun and it never becomes tiring or feels like work. So it's wonderful. <laughs> well, I don't even really know how to go about the direction of today's uh, interview, but I, I do know that I want to talk about healthy families and how you started out with chiropractic in your own personal sure. life and uh, how you've been able to like nurture those relationships and not only like refer out for chiropractic, but um, utilize it for your uh, yourself and your patients? Sure, absolutely. It's a great question. So, you know, I'll start off by saying that I'm a family nurse practitioner. So for those of you out there, you probably realize that means I'm trained in Western medic medicine, right? So how I usually explain that to people is I'm trained and every bit of my schooling taught me you figure out what the problem is and you prescribe a medication for it. And while I went through nurse practitioner school, I thought that was awesome, you know, and I've been doing that for my patients for years and years and years. I'm, you know, 18, 19 years being a nurse practitioner. Um, but over the course of the years, I've realized that sometimes pills and medication are not what's really best for your patients or yourself and your family. And so I have started um, looking into and learning a lot about many alternative or other types of treatments that are out there. 
one being chiropractors, but many others I also use for my patients and for myself and my family, but I absolutely love visiting my chiropractor. And going back to the first time I ever saw one, um, I was pregnant with my second son, Xander. So this would be about eight years ago or so, seven or eight years ago. And I was suffering from excruciating back pain, back pain that I didn't have with my first pregnancy. And mind you, this child was literally five pounds when he was born. So he was a teeny tiny baby. I don't know how he gave me so much back pain, but I went to my OB and my midwives and I begged them to please deliver me early. Now you have to understand I'm a neonatal nurse practitioner. I work with preemies and NICU babies and I know full well that 36 is too early to be asked to be induced. Yet I was in so much pain. I was begging them to please induce me. And they told me, no, we're not going to induce you. And one of my midwives um, gave me a referral to a local chiropractor who is used to practicing on pregnant women and has developed a nice reputation in our area. And so I went completely a little bit terrified because even being a medical provider, what I knew about chiropractors was I just thought it was back and neck and that it was very scary cracking the neck and I was a little bit terrified to go, but I was in more pain. <laughs> so I went and uh, changed my life that day. I went in hobbling and, you know, just not even wanting to get in my car and drive that day to walking out straight pain, completely gone with just one visit. And I was a, a total believer after that and lover of chiropractors. So I went every week from that point on until I delivered and had a beautiful delivery and a wonderful rest of my pregnancy. It took my whole negative feelings around that last month and turned them to complete beauty. beauty. Um, so I'm forever grateful for that chiropractor who has now sadly since retired. I miss him very much, but I found other ones since then. But that was my first introduction into chiropractors and using chiropractics on myself. Um, since then, I have learned many different ways. Um, and at that time, I literally thought it was just for back and neck pain. Of course, since now, I have learned all of the different ailments and things that chiropractors can help with. And I often refer my own friends, family, um, children, and clients, patients to chiropractors for lots of different ailments. Well, you know, something that you were discussing there was um, getting babies adjusted. Um, yeah. I know like when I was first working in a clinic 14 years ago, I, I went out to a marketing event with uh, the doc's uh, cousin that I was working for. And uh, I was at a, a festival in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and uh, we were out there supposed to be getting new patients for the clinic. And uh, I was so like green. I didn't know really what I was doing, but I was talking to this lady and uh, I told her that we adjust babies and I told her it would be really healthy for her to get her, her, her newborn in. I was like, I wish I would have gotten adjusted at that age instead of when I was like 16 years old. I wish I would have started out life with like my spine in proper alignment with all my nerves functioning the way they're supposed to. And she's like, you cannot tell people in the public that we adjust babies. And I was like, I don't know, maybe you have to go home today. <laughs> like, cause <laughs> it's, I believe that we should be adjusting babies and I'm going to stand for that. And I'm going to tell the next person that what I see with the kid that we can help them too. And yeah. I was just at the seminar this weekend with a guy, uh, his name is Jill LaMarche. He's the, uh, senior vice president of life, uh, university down in Marietta, Georgia. And this sticks with me and it resonates with me. And he said, um, if you know a truth, how can you know a truth and not tell it? And so true. I, I, that like sinks into my heart and like, how can you know a truth and not tell it? And that's the power of chiropractic when it comes to people that understand it and that they, they can like find that that miracle happens to them. Uh, it's, Absolutely. it's really powerful stuff. That goes along with, you know, the Hippocratic Oath, you know, and to do no harm for your patients. And so, you know, we, we come from that on the Western medication side of the world where it's the same thing, you know. Um, there's some people in the medical world that may say, oh, the research isn't out there. And you know what I'm referring to, some of these studies and they haven't been replicated or they're not blind and everything like that. Yes, 
you know, I understand the benefit of a double blind study. I understand how to read studies. I also know, and I understand when I have a mom who has a baby with colic and she can't stand anymore to hear her child cry and scream and she's constantly needing breaks and she doesn't have the support. And she has her baby adjusted by a chiropractor and comes back to me and is just absolutely grateful. Life changed. It's just, yeah. So there's just experience. I have seen it work. Two lives changed. (laughs) Two lives changed. Absolutely. You know, and probably more than that, because whoever her partner is and whoever her family and support system has to hear this poor, you know, woman's despair for her baby, you know, and I've used chiropractic medicine on my own child. I had a child with severe, severe reflux. Um, and, and it was horrible I, to the point where I almost felt sorry for myself because of how much laundry I had to do, but I felt more sorry for this child who threw up after every time that he ate. Um, we went through all the studies and everything was fine. And I was just told that I have to deal with it. And as a mom and a medical provider, that just wasn't okay. And for any of you out there who know there are medications, many of them just don't work. And so now you're giving your children medication and they don't even need it. Some of which come with side effects. Um, and so I tried all that and I realized, you know, after doing all of that and using the Western way, I needed something better, something more, something that worked. And I took my baby to a chiropractor, adjusted him and he still suffered with reflux, but it minimized it. It really cut it down the amount of times that he would throw up after he ate. So it was, you know, definitely life-changing for us as well. Um, in our own home, it was my own baby. So yeah, this episode's firing me up so much because there's so much for me to share, like, so there's an innate intelligence inside of us like it's born into us you know your nervous system quits working when you're dead and as long as you have a nervous system you don't want there to be impingements and you don't want there to be spinal impingements on nerves that go to our vital organs and you know i i use this analogy quite a bit if i cut my finger right now and it's just a, a small paper cut but it's not like a dangerous cut i don't have to look at that that cut and tell it to heal like in two to three days, it's just going to heal naturally because I have innate intelligence inside of me. My body's inborn uh, systems, they heal. Like it's just natural. So when we can remove the interference in the nervous system on that newborn or that nursing baby and yeah. correct that and take the pressure off that nerve going to the gut, now the baby's going to go to homeostasis, as you guys call balance of health, and it's going to restore that child back to functionality and not crying and not being fussy and sleeping and yes. you know feeding well and thriving and i think that if more more people knew this stuff that we're talking about they would be like scheduled tomorrow today like they would get their whole families under care because it's not about the neck and back i mean that's just where we have to look to to do the correction but most of it's about the why did you show up today yeah. And full, full body wellness, you know, so many things and they're all connected. Um, but yes, I do think that's a common misconception, misconception, not just among medical providers like myself who never learned anything about chiropractic world, but also just from the general layperson. They just think it's cracking your neck or back. They don't realize uh, the benefit and what that actual adjustment is doing in the inside and why you want it. So that is definitely a challenge, I think, for chiropractors to um, teach the world about what they do, what they can do, and the ailments that they can fix, you know, or help with. I just think that it's it's it has to be like supported through like the women. Um, <laughs> I do. Um, women yeah. are the decision makers for the families. And so it, true. And if you like, I go and do a lot of direct sales marketing where I'll go to like a farmer's market or a health expo or a street festival, and I'll be in a 10 by 10 booth getting new patients for chiropractors. And uh, I love events with strollers and moms because that's my (laughs) ideal client. Because once we get the mom um, integrated into understanding that chiropractic is healthy for her, now the partner's coming, the kids are coming, and that's like the big the big why for me is I want healthy families. And I, I know you do too. Yeah. So I was like, in our pre chat, I was really excited about this episode because, you know, you, you have some specialties. Um, I, I, I've never heard it said before the fourth trimester expert. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> t- 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 talk about this, this uh, terminology and how you're helping uh, newborns and, and moms. 
Sure. So the fourth trimester is a period of time, three to four months after you deliver your baby. So we call it the fourth trimester because it's almost like a trimester being inside. The baby still wants to be inside you. So it's sort of a lot of baby holding, a lot of hugging, a lot of skin to skin. And that, of course, includes breastfeeding. And so the fourth trimester is like another time where you still feel like you're pregnant in a way uh, because you're really learning that infant and you're spending so much time feeding that infant. Um, I'm a family nurse practitioner with a background of 18, almost 18 years in working with newborns in NICU. So I'm a NICU nurse practitioner, uh, level two NICUs mostly, which is um, babies that are 32 weeks and older stay in my NICUs. But I also stabilize babies who are born 24 weeks to 32 and then transfer them out to higher level care nurseries. Um, and part of my main job is also to take care of all the well babies in the well baby nurseries and help new mommies learn how to breastfeed and take care of their infants. And I go beyond that. So after they go home with their infants, I work with them after usually through virtually and sometimes through house visits with some of my local moms, um, teaching them how to transition into the role of motherhood gracefully, painlessly, as much as possible. And I really want to provide them with more mom, new mom confidence. Uh, rather than some of those uncertainties that they have. So I'm a fourth trimester expert, which means I help women with breastfeeding, learning about their postpartum bodies, how to heal them, um, learning about common newborn ailments, and a big proponent of the uh, postpartum mental wellness as well. We are such risk as new moms for postpartum depression. One in every eight uh, pregnant women will suffer from postpartum depression, which is a huge amount. And I usually describe this in a way that think of eight women you know who gave birth or are mothers. There's nobody in this world that doesn't know eight women who have had children. And there's a chance that one of them suffer from postpartum depression. You might not have even known it. And maybe they didn't either. But it's incredibly common. And I think there are things we can do in our pregnancy to help set us up better to prevent some of that postpartum depression. Um, because I think a lot of it comes from stress, from uncertainty, from mom guilt that we place on ourselves. And of course, there's a um, chemical uh, cause. But I also believe that postpartum depression, it's a multifaceted um, disease, not just chemistry, but also our experiences, our social issues that are surround us, our support system or their lack of. So there's a lot that compounds and comes together to create postpartum depression. And so I want to do and set women up a little bit better by eliminating some of those outside things to try to, you know, set them up better. So and if they do suffer from postpartum depression, I help set them up so that they have a plan in place so that they very quickly recognize it. So they very quickly deploy a plan and they find the treatment that they need. So uh, that is what a four trimester expert is. And I do a lot of this through a course that I have, Mastering Motherhood. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, Mango Voice, Life Chiropractic College West, and MSculpt. Let's hustle. Yeah, I was going to ask you about it, like if that was a part of your course. And I, I, I just want to like focus a little bit more on the communication and how you, you, um, you know, I think a lot of times the reason that people don't thrive or do well is because of lack of knowledge. It's not that they don't want to know. Um, people, it's, I hate to say, it, but people are just ignorant and they don't know where to go or who to trust. And they don't know what they, most of the time people don't have, have the ability to think for themselves. They want somebody to think for them. So they want to always rely on a, a trusted source. And most of the times when people trust people, it's sometimes bad information. So we have to really be even more cognizant of not only being unaware, but who do we take advice from? Um, so I think it's really cool that you have a, a, the course Mastering Motherhood. Let's talk a little bit about how you help set up for success with the communication to where there is support. 
Sure. So the course has, you know, eight separate units and there's a couple of different ones in there. One is getting ready for birth. So that is creating a birth plan, packing your go bag. And there are different things, your birth partner, whoever that person is, whoever you identify as coming into this new role as a mother who will come into that role with you as another parent or as a support system for you. For single moms, that may be your own mother or it may be your sister. Uh, for married women, it may be your husband. So whoever your birth partner is, um, the first couple of chapters of the course is teaching that person all about things that they can do to support you in your labor and come, come to some decisions together about the baby. For example, do you want to vaccinate with hepatitis B or do you want to give vitamin K? I teach all of these things in my course. I teach why some people decline them. And I teach what they're for, why we do it. So what people can make informed decisions uh, rather than be told what to do or rather than, you know, find misinformation on the Internet. Um, I am, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time. I know where to find reputable information and resources. And I also know what works in practice. Um, so I can kind of give people both information, you know, here's some of what the research or what the American Academy of Pediatrics says. Here's what I've done for my own children. Here's what, you know, I suggest if you'd like a suggestion, happy to offer one. I don't tell my clients what to do. I do it with teaching. But going into the family support side of things, when it comes to mental health, there's a mental health side. We do what's called a pre-birth mental health plan. So that plan is a whole written out plan on finding out their risk factors for postpartum depression, uh, identifying if they're at higher risk than maybe another pregnant woman is. And if so, we identify providers that they would call upon should they need it. So that would be a psychiatrist, a therapist, or anything like that. But we also use alternative treatments for postpartum depression, and that would be music therapy, guided meditation, essential oils, acupuncture. Uh, chiropractic, there's all kinds of alternative therapies that we can use for our bodies and our minds. And I, am, I encourage my clients to deploy these when needed, because it takes so long to get in to see a psychiatrist or a, or a therapist, we could wait months sometimes. And so I think the worst thing we could do is sit and wait for that appointment. And so we have a plan in place, we make that ahead of time. And I teach their partners things that they can do things that they can say, to help women um, get to the other side of, post, of getting treated for postpartum depression if they need it. And the first thing being, many times our partners realize we're depressed before we do. Mm -hmm. And they don't quite know how to say it. They don't know how to say it without setting us off or offending us, or at worst, making us feel like, oh gosh, this was my biggest fear. I went through postpartum depression and my husband was a little afraid to tell me he thought something was off because he didn't want me to think that, I di that he didn't trust me with the baby. Mm. And so, you know, that's a real struggle for, for couples and parents, you know, and as a, as a pregnant woman, we have so much going through, we normalize those depressive feelings. We say, this is totally normal. This is a funk. I'm going to get over this. We just have to get to the next day. But our partners really need to learn what the right things are to say, what the right things are to do to help, you know, tell us, communicate with us. We use that um, in my course, I teach using a code word. So ahead of time, they pick a code word. It could be Oreo, whatever their favorite dessert is, whatever, something that's like a positive thing among them as a couple. And whenever that code word is used, that is a way for the partner to let the, the new mother know that they're concerned and they want to have a serious heart to heart without judgment, without yelling, without fear or anger. It's just, I love you and I'm worried about you and let's talk. Um, and so we, we do practice that in our, in our, in our program. And then they can use that going forward. And that's just one example of how we do as partner communication. There's so many other things, you know, throughout the course sprinkled in for partners to help physically, but also mentally and emotionally. I love this. And my takeaway is self-care is self-love is not selfish. <laughs> Absolutely. That's so true. And I really believe that if more people took care of themselves, they wouldn't run themselves ragged in that early stage of like motherhood and they would be much more equipped and wouldn't lose their momentum and traction if they just really focused on themselves as well they wouldn't get the mentals they wouldn't get the physicals they would get like the positivities and they would get like the empowerments and they would get like the connection and i think a lot of times a lot of what you're talking about it becomes because of connection um that's my highest life value is connection. So when people lose connection, um, it can cause a lot of like 
crummy thoughts. It can cr create a lot of like poor feelings. And uh, some of these things, they never get talked about. So I, I'm thankful that we're, we're, we're discussing some of this stuff today on this episode. Um, right. I want to get back to our question set a little bit. Sure. Um, so for you, um, you teach people this stuff, but what are you doing for health for you and your family? Because I think that would be a huge eye opener to your audience and my audience today. Um, because that's like, you know, it's a, it's a big, like inside secret for a lot of these practitioners who are out there saving the world. Like, how are you staying healthy? Well, that is a constant, you know, <laughs> to, on my to-do list is what it is to tell you the truth. I'm a mom of three boys. I have a full-time job. My husband and I have two separate businesses and I also have this online business. So with all that wrapped into one, if I can do my best at keeping myself and my family healthy, I think a lot of other people out there can too. Um, so it really comes down to, first of all, being organized. You know, I am the default parent per se in the household, which means it is my responsibility ability to make sure everyone has their doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and everything scheduled. Um, so that comes from having a really good calendar and organizational system. So that is number one. <laughs> uh, number two would be, you know, to, I keep track of everybody. So everyone has a document on my, on my computer and it, and it keeps track of important dates, dates they might've had surgery, dates of any vaccinations, dates uh, or specific medications they might be on. It is so uh, imperative that I do this because when I walk in to a doctor's office or uh, another provider's office with this paper, I can say, here's my child. He has reflux. These are all the meds we tried. These are all of his symptoms that he has. This is when it happens. This is how often it happens. Um, these are his vitamins, any other medications he's on. Here you go. Now, doctors do take a detailed uh, or providers will take a detailed history but it's amazing how much of that we forget when we are sitting in our office and the kids running around us and we're trying to fill out that paperwork hard, hardly anything really goes in there and that information is really important for your provider to help you when you get there so if you really want the best care and the best information come with all of it and come with it already on a paper i've had so many um specialists will tell me wow you just made my job so much easier and i can tell by this you know what's worked what hasn't worked and what our next step is and then they don't waste time making me get another mri because here it is right here on the paper i got it and here's the result they don't waste time making us get, you know, take other blood tests because I brought them with me. So I think as the primary care, you know, caregiver in your household or whoever you are, whoever's taking care of the health in your family, it's one, stay organized with those appointments and two, stay organized with the history. It makes it so much easier, especially if you have five people to remember. Um, so that's another two. And then for my own family, we use a lot of different things. Yes. Western medicine is part of it. I think there is a place for what I do in the world. Medications are great for many times, but we also use essential oils in our household, especially for our babies, very much so. There are very few medications that are approved or that actually work for infants. And I, you know, I always tell people, I teach this very carefully. Essential oils are like medicine themselves. You don't just grab some and dab it on. You need to know what you're doing with it. So I educate myself in essential oils and we use them a lot in our household. My kids call me the witchy doctor because I'm always making some potion of some sort, mixing it with Western, maybe a Western cream that I have, a prescription cream with my oils, and I'm kind of make my own things over here. Um, but I do that. I use chiropractors for our health. I use acupuncturists for my health often. Um, and then we have other forms that we use depending on what's going on. I've used sound baths before, Reiki. Um, there probably isn't anything I haven't or wouldn't try. I think that there is something out there um, to be learned by all of us. So I am I try to learn a little bit about everything that's out there. But that's basically how we keep healthy around here. Of course, with regular diet, we eat clean in this household as much as we can. Um, and we try to exercise. My boys are very into sports. So, yeah, I, I, I like, uh, you know, there's a lot of great things that you shared there. Um, my takeaway of that is you should have two doctors in your life. You should have one to keep you healthy and one to save you from dying. And I, I think that we do an amazing job in this country and worldwide with triage care. Um, yeah. But we need to really connect the gaps between how to stay healthy and not have the necessity to be sick and not have the, the, I think a lot of times people, you know, hold, especially in their older years, they hold on to like their doctor's appointments as like a badge of honor or like the, the prescriptions that they take as like a badge of honor, like, mm -hmm. This is my identity now. 
because they lack right. so much fulfillment in like other parts of their life that you know if they can busy themselves up with doctor's appointments and this and that now they have an identity again but i think if people just had a better connection between staying healthy and not needing interventions as often as people think that they need um, I think that we could do a whole lot better keeping this nation stronger and stop wasting so much time um, doing things that you don't need to do. I mean, like you said, if you just were organized, you could stop a lot of, you know, repeat things and you could speed up, you could speed up the knowledge skill set for the practitioners and it would make for a better system. But a lot of times people come into it like, well, I, I don't know where that thing is, or I don't know like that thing that I did, or I don't know what year that was, or uh, last time I got my teeth cleaned, I, I don't know. Like last time I like, you know, did anything like to say like what month and what year was it? I don't know. Like, you know, you're better off going and find out when you like got car insurance. Like <laughs> <laughs> we know more about our cars than we do our own bodies. So true. Yeah. What you're speaking about is primary care and preventative medicine. And sadly, it, it's not valued enough in, in our country and probably in the world, but definitely in our country. And it's not valued until you don't have the ability to do preventative medicine anymore. And now you're forced to treat whatever you've got. And yeah, that does turn into somebody's whole life at that point because they have an ailment now that they suffer from when I wish we did spend more time preventing very much. So well, yeah. I think if anybody's ever like seen like somebody climb Everest or climb K2 or one of those big, like 21,000 feet mountains. I do 14,000 feet mountains and they're, they're no in comparison, but um, they're still big and scary kind of, but when <laughs> somebody goes up one of those bigger, scarier mountains, uh, they actually have a Sherpa and people yeah. that like, they kind lead of, them. they lead them and they protect them on their journey to success with climbing a mountain. Like, yes. wouldn't it be awesome if one day we had like a concierge system or like a Sherpa that helped us like walk through our health journey of life to where we <laughs> didn't have these like pitfalls and like bad situations that happened to us that we feel alone. We feel like we don't have anybody to talk to and we feel like it's too expensive. How do I get access? Like all these things that like mix us up in our head. But if we just like had like a case like manager, like, Hey, you're born. This is your case manager. They're going to make sure that you go through life healthy. Um, wouldn't everybody want one of those? Gene, you're making me laugh and giggle right now because I never thought of myself, but now I totally feel like I am like the pregnant ladies and the new mom Sherpa of the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, That's exactly I, I, what I do. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think I think if we just start putting like the right message out there, then... <laughs> She said, Haley, Haley Jewel says it's called the mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The mom, the mom of the world. Yeah. See, that's just basically. it. It's, it's, it's I'm the... like the mom of the moms, basically, you know, <laughs> the mom of the new moms. You know, I, I usually tell my clients, think of me as like your best friend next door, you know, who just happens to be a nurse practitioner and knows a ton about babies. You know, you would always go knock on her door asking her, what, is this rash something serious? You know, and then you have that like in me, except I'm not next door, but I'm right through the screen for you. And that's basically what I tell people to think of me as. <laughs> well, well, I know we're coming up on the edge of our show and there's a lot of stuff I wanted to get to, um, but let's, let's talk about how if people wanted to work with you. I know that I'm really excited about this because when I have a kid, I'm going to like, definitely like be in touch with you, but um, rem I, I know you do remote work and you do local work. Um, talk a little bit about both aspects of that. Sure. So, you know, I have a lot of local clients who happen to live around me. They know what I do. They will often call me up and ask me to come help. I do come to friends' houses, help them with their babies, assess things, let them know, no, this is something you need to go to the ER for, or no, this is something we can totally handle. And it just gives new moms that reassurance. So I absolutely love to do my little house calls when I can. But I also have plenty of women from afar who don't live near me. And I do that through my course, Mastering Motherhood, as well as the support group that I have formed through that course, which gives access to me, which is awesome. And if anyone's interested in learning more about that, you can check out my website, www.newmommyguru.com. 
And I'll make sure to share my link tree link with James so he can post it wherever. And that has a lot of great stuff on there, which is a meal plan for pregnant women, as well as a lot of Amazon shopping lists of all the great things that you need. None of the fluff that you don't need, great things that you need for newborns, babies, for your first aid kit at home and all kinds of great things as a new mom. I think there's a lot of value there. Um, can we go lightning round and ask the last three questions? Yeah, let's do it. Where's chiropractic going in the next 20 years? Well, I have to say, I hope not commercialized. I think that is what's messing Western medicine up so much is these larger corporations are buying up all these great pediatricians and mom and pop providers. And I get why it's happening, but it's really taking away uh, what, you know, especially primary and preventive medicine is there for, for people to really get to know who they're taking care of and, and they're in their community. And when these smaller businesses are bought up, it's sad. So I hope chiropractic medicine is not going that way because I absolutely love of going into my mom and pop chiropractor where they know me, I know them, I see them out in, you know, in the community at events and they become friends and their kids go to school with my kids. And it's just such a community thing. And I think that's really important. So I have to say, I love that about my own chiropractor. So I hope that's where they're going. <laughs> um, who are some of your heroes? If you could sit down and talk to one person for an hour, who would it be? This is a hard one, but I would have to go with maybe Simone Golds because I followed her a lot throughout the pandemic. Um, and so I would love to chat with her. And honestly, DeSantos, I'm going to try to convince him to move to New York, to tell you the truth. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's cool stuff. And uh, tell me a miracle story, something that you've seen during your 18 years of your career pushing 20. What is something that you've seen that you like to share with your audience? Oh, with, with me or with chiropractic, with my medical history? Um, it, I guess, it could just be something you've seen as a practitioner. Yeah, sure. I always often like to share the story because I have permission from the person to share it. But um, when I was on call one day for the NICU, I was called into a crash C-section for a baby that had no heartbeat. And it was my responsibility to resuscitate that infant. That infant was born and it was my nephew. And nobody in the room knew it was my nephew because everything happened so fast. As I was doing CPR on him, I started talking to him by name and my nurses all started to get teary eyed as they, as they realized who the baby was and that I was working on my own nephew. Um, luckily that day, we were able to get his heart going, bring him back. He ended up requiring body cooling, which if you don't know what that means, it's, it's a thing we do where we lower infants temperature to protect their brain and um, we keep them cold to prevent any further injury to the brain from inflammation. And of course, there's a lot more into that, but basically it's a newer treatment for newborns. It's been probably about 10, 12, 15 years going on. And so he had to be a cool, we called a cool cat baby. Um, he was sick in the hospital for about a month. And then they, you know, after a couple of days of cooling, they warm them back up and then they evaluate them. And today he's a beautiful, healthy three, three and a half year old boy running around. You would never know that he was born and so sick. And that was like my personal and professional miracle story. Um, and I share it because he's not the only one in the first. We have many babies who go through what he went through. And babies are so amazing and so resilient. And they come back from some horrible things. And they're just so strong. And I just love what I do because of that. And people ask me, how is it when you have to you know, deal with sick babies? And I say, most of my days are incredibly rewarding. I absolutely love working with my babies. Every now and then we may have a sad day, but most of my days are rewarding and beautiful watching the strength of these infants and of course their parents. So I like to thank all that I get to work with. Well, congratulations on that story. Um, is, is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with our audience today before we end the interview? Well, no, I just think it's so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on to speak to your audience. And thank you to all the chiropractors out there who do what you do. Um, coming from a nurse practitioner, you all are amazing. And um, keep doing it. All right. Well, Kristen O'Dell, thank you for being my guest today in episode 480 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I will close out by telling everyone, you're just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.